When I was a student uh, studying architecture at Pratt Institute in New York, uh, I first became aware of uh, John Cage, and I read uh, his book Silence, and it uh, had a profound influence on my work. And uh, it was something so totally radically new and different from any other way of thinking for me. And this book was a, a kind of freedom that you could pick it up and read it from the middle to the end or from the end to the beginning. And there was no order to reading it. And uh, I think especially important is his lecture on nothing. Uh, to do nothing is very difficult. Uh, and often uh, my work on stage is uh, very static or appears to be very static, but uh, if you look at it closely, it's very Baroque. Uh, and sometimes the more still we are, the more aware we become a, a movement. And sometimes the quieter we are, the way we become more aware of sound. Cage said there's no such thing as silence. But when we're very quiet, uh, we somehow uh, begin to sense uh, our hearing in a different way. Uh, Cage was at Harvard and he went into a total uh, soundproof uh, room and he said he was uh, astonished at how much he heard. He could hear his heartbeat, he heard himself breathing, uh, that there was always so much sound. And uh, in this text uh, on nothing, uh, I'm often... Uh, reminded of a story uh, or situation that uh, I experienced in Texas many years ago. I went back to visit my father in Texas and um, went to, uh, to a neighbor's house next door and there was a child playing in the or sitting in the middle of a room and he sat for I watched him for maybe 10 minutes or so and he was just looking at the space between his fingers and occasionally he would move a finger and he was so concentrated. And his mother came and I said, shh, uh, look. And after a half minute or so, she was impatient. She said, John, John, what are you doing? And he said, nothing, just nothing. And uh, that was a big lesson. Thank you very much. Okay.